All right. Hello, everybody. Um, it is now 6.30 p.m. I would like to call the regular design review board meeting of August the 3rd, 2023 to order. Uh, <clears throat> before I proceed, I would like to take a moment to go over our new meeting protocols for today. <clears throat> the South Pasadena Design Review Board will be conducted in person to maximize public safety while still maintaining transparency and public access. Members of the public can observe the meeting via Zoom. Uh, will staff please take roll? Board Member Younger? Present. Board Member Hill? Present. Chair Nichols? Present. You have quorum. Next, we move on to approval of the agenda. Uh, board members, do you have any requests for additions, revisions to the agenda? If so, please raise your hand. Nope. I see no hands raised. So seeing no respect, request, I would like a vote of the board to proceed with approval of the agenda as submitted. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. There's nobody to say nay, so we can move on. Uh, next is the disclosure by board members of site visits and ex parte contact for items on today's agenda. Um, board member Hill? Uh, no contacts and no site visits. And uh, board member Younger? No site visits, no contact. Yeah. Uh, no site visits and no contacts for myself either. <clears throat> next is public comment for general items that are not on the agenda. Uh, has staff received any? Public comments in person or via Zoom? We do have three public comments in chambers. Um, if we can go ahead and start, I have a Brian Lee. Okay, sir, come up to the podium. You have three minutes to speak. No, no, Jen. I, I think uh, uh, and this is the matching planning manager here. So I think if the um, public comments relating to project specific, we'll wait for the uh, the project itself. Are you here for the project for um, 2031 30. Crystal Lake? Yes, yeah, so you can have a C, so. So uh, this item is item number one, which is a general public comment for, for items not on the agenda. So when we get to the specific item, which is item number two, then whoever pretend, participating, attending, will get to fill out a speaker card and they can make public comment at that time. Yes, so we'll, we'll quote your name at that time. Again, my apologies. So we do, um, we do not have any public comments regarding the non-agenda items in chambers. Um, if our guests on Zoom have any questions, please click the hand icon to make a public comment on the non-agenda items. And we do not have any. Okay, thank you. Uh, so then I guess we go on to our first agenda item. Uh, 2031 Crest Lake Avenue, uh, project number 2506-DRX. Uh, staff, do we have a presentation on that one? We do. Good evening. Thank you, Chair Nichols. I, uh, my name is Sandra Robles. I'm the Associate Planner and I will be presenting from home today. And I apologize in advance if I have to pause a couple of times. Lily, would you like me to share the, the presentation? Can you go and see that? Um, I can see it on your screen, but I don't think it's sharing. Does it have the green bar on the top that says it's sharing? There it goes. Yeah. 
It, it now says you are screen sharing. Okay, great. So, um, unfortunately, Lily is not allowing me access to start it. Let me go ahead and- um, Can you see it now? We'll go ahead and do it this way, yeah. Okay, thank you, sorry for the delay. Okay, so this next project on the agenda is item number two for 2131 Cross Lake Avenue, project number 2506 CRX. Next. This first slide is of an aerial minute, an aerial image of the subject property. Um, the subject property is located north of Alhambra Road and is bounded by Empress Avenue to the west and Fremont Avenue to the east. Next slide. The applicant is proposing 134 square foot first story addition to convert 74 square feet of habitable space into garage square footage, a new 914 square foot second story addition, a 912 square foot basement, a 395 square foot rear patio, a 363 square foot rear second story balcony, a 150 square foot front porch. And the applicant is proposing to change the architectural style from traditional ranch style to modern farm. Moving on to the site details, the property is zoned residential single family or RS. The lot size is 6,511 square feet and the house size is 1,304 square feet. The property has an attached garage and it is a standard two car garage at 397 square feet. The property was built in 1950. And I want to provide you with some background. Um, I'm sure you can tell that the design before you right now is not the design in the application package. Um, the applicant first submitted the project back in July 2022. And this is the initial design. After some feedback and going back and forth, uh, staff let the applicant know that we could not make the neighborhood compatibility finding as the property was excessive in mass and bulk. And it introduced a new architectural style, which is a Spanish style home in a neighborhood that is traditionally ranch style and minimal traditional. Next slide, please. Here you can see what was previously proposed for the rear of the property. And as you can see, there was a round tower um, that was also out of character for the neighborhood. So upon explaining further to the applicant, the applicant decided to take them upon themselves to go ahead and redesign the project uh, with consideration to the design guidelines. Next slide. Here you see the first design to the left and the new revised design to the right. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and present the rest of the revised design to you. Next slide. This slide is of the site plans in combination with the first story floor plan. The top right design is of the existing property. It is currently three bedrooms and two bathrooms. And the bottom left site plan is of the revised first floor plan, which eliminates the bedrooms at the bottom level, includes an office, uh, living area, and dining, dining area and kitchen. The area to the rear you can see is the patio and deck area. The dark shade on the front would be the addition to the house. 
and the front shaded area is the new 150 square foot porch. Next slide. I'm sorry, I'm just going to do a quick pause. My apologies. Um, this next slide is of the new second story floor plan. As you can see, the second story is is set back from the side proper from the side of the wall plane. And here again, you can see the rear balcony. Next slide. Oh, I'm sorry. And I failed to mention for the second story um, addition the Three bedrooms are going to be on the second story with two bathrooms. This next slide is of the basement, which um, is going to have a half bathroom. Next slide. This next slide is of the roof plan. To the right is the existing roof plan, which is hips, and to the left is the proposed roof plan. Um, the gold color is of the first story and the, the regular tiled roof or shingles is of the second story. Next slide. Next is the east or front elevation. The top right image is of the elevation with the two adjacent properties outlined in blue. The bottom is of the existing front elevation and the top left is a rendering of the project. Okay. Here you see the proposed elevation and the existing elevation. Next image. This is the west or the re-elevation. Here you can see the top right is the proposed, the bottom left is existing, and the rendering to the top left. Next, you see the north or one of the side elevations. Again, the, the top right is proposed, the bottom left is existing. In this next image, you can see how um, the project would fit within the neighborhood or the neighborhood context. The property is centered in the middle on the top image, and again, in the middle at the bottom image for the rendering. Um, you can see that the architectural style, while called modern farmhouse, is very in line with a ranch style home, particularly the ranch style home, the two story ranch style to the left of the property. Um, for modern farmhouse can have multiple um, architectural styles attached to it. For example, you can have a coastal farmhouse, a French farmhouse, or in this case, a modern farmhouse that also has the style of a ranch style home. Next. This next slide is of the entire block. And the blocks that are outlined in red are existing two-story property. And the, outli the outline in blue is of the subject property. At the bottom, you see a table that provides more information on the FAR square footage. So now the FAR square footage does not count the basement because it does not count uh, subterranean square feet. So 2031 Crest Lake Avenue 
will be a total of 2,278 square feet. And you have 2057 Crest Lake Avenue, which is a total of 2,467 square feet. And you also have another comparable, with, which is directly adjacent to the property. It is 2035 Crest Lake Avenue, and it is 2,230 square feet. Next slide. As such, staff recommends that the Design Review Board find the project exempt under secret guidelines section 15301 and approve the project number 2506 DRX subject to conditions of approval. The Design Review Board also has the option to approve the project with modified or added conditions. They also have the option to continue the project to address comments discussed, or the design review may deny the project. That concludes staff presentation. The applicant representative, Kaizen Chen, is here, and he also has a presentation, and staff is available to answer any of your questions. Sir, Sir, can you step up to the podium? Yes. No. Sorry, sorry. Um, we're only limited to public comments for three minutes. So right now is, sorry, we have a protocol here. Sorry. So we have a protocol, hearing protocols. Yes, sorry. currently the, um, the board is to ask staff any questions. So um, does, does anyone have any questions for staff? I do not. Um, I don't have any specific questions for staff this time. Yeah, me, me neither. Uh, does the applicant have a presentation? It sounds like they do. Yeah. Yeah. They do, in fact, have a presentation. Yep, yeah. you can come to the Yeah, side. either side, I think. Lily, I'm going to try to um, to share the presentation on my end because it does have a video. OK. Uh, Lily, can I ask a quick question? Does the applicant have a time limit on their presentation? Um, that's what I'm asking. I think the applicant's usually five minutes. Five or seven. I remember seven in the past. Okay. But I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. Do I put it for five minutes, Matt, or seven? Um, there's no rule on the applicant's um, presentation because after um, the applicant's presentation, also the board has questioning for, for, for the applicant as well. Uh, is somebody going to bring his presentation? Yes, my apologies. Oh, okay. it's, uh, it's currently loading. Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Almost there. At least it says it is. Okay, we might have to scrap this idea, Lily. You might have to pull it up. Okay. Sorry about that. Good evening, Your Honor. My name is Kaizen Chen. I am the owner's representative. They're here tonight. Um, the first slide shows a digital rendering of the proposed project. Um, so as the second slide continues, its animation depicts the overall design intent. Um, the design is, uses modern sidings, window trims, and window door 
roof style elements mimicking the rustic looks of the adjacent neighborhood architectural style aesthetics. The second floor footprint has a larger setback than the first floor of 12 foot nine inches at northerly side yard and 17 feet two inches at southerly um, side yard. This property is not in the historical area. This project zoning is allowed maximum 35 feet total building heights. And this project is within the maximum allowable square footage per zoning district standards. On the third slide, and then follow up on the next fourth slide, we will have certain features like the landscape ar architect to propose soft landscape screening of uh, 15 to 35 feet of tall, slender Italian cypress, um, perhaps three feet on center spacing along the rear and side yards for neighboring privacy mitigation measure as an example. So the owner wants to be very sensitive to the neighborhood because it's their permanent home. Um, in regards to the neighbor's letters and concern, there would be licensed professionals of geologist engineer gathering soil sample reports boring tests that will go drilling down as far as 25 feet deep to ensure the structural engineer follows most stringent state mandates on seismic building code standards when it comes to the basement design. We also have civil engineer to design proper grading and drainage per city public works standards. And in this post COVID times, the significant of labor and material shortage and the long lead delay is a realistic statewide factor on a construction schedule critical path. Now, the reason I bring this up is, is to address some of the concerns the neighbors have. We are here tonight to let the design review board members understand that these, that this, these owners here with their three toddlers here tonight are very humble, loving, hardworking, very busy young family of seven. There are two twins, infants, currently being cared for by the nanny. They're not here right now, but you can see there are three toddlers here with the mom and dad. They are a long time residents living in the hearts of San Gabriel Valley. As hardworking parents, they bought this property in hopes of establishing a sense of safety, security, and a community bonding. They really hope to embrace the community as this is their permanent forever home. Residents to live, to go to school, and until they are old. Not for tomorrow, not for next year, but for many decades to come. For the reasons of accommodating the large immediate family of seven living st standards and a need to store kids toys and bicycles, the school equipment, and a memorandum of, of different albums of grandparents' pictures that need to be stored somewhere. Where? It has to be somewhere that's not livable. So they wanted a basement. And or these are just a, the essential necessities of home features. Since the owners are hoping to establish a long-term residency, the owners are open to design mitigation measures to ensure the safety of the public, add real estate values, and to beautify the neighborhood. And this is why they're here tonight for any questions and for the cooperations to compromise to make sure this project carries forward. I thank you for your time and your support. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions for the applicants? Um, I do have a question. So on, I noticed on the renderings and the animation, as well as the landscape plan, there's trees, there's two trees in the front. Are those new or are those existing? There will be existing trees along with some new ones. Okay, so those are existing and those are the actual heights, roughly of the heights based on the, okay, yes. perfect, great, thank you. That was my only question. Uh, you, have a, you have a question? I have no questions. Uh, I have a question. You mentioned, um, and I know some of the letters here, talk about concerns about the basement. And uh, you'd said that, uh, have you guys already consulted with civil and structural engineers or is that something that's still coming? So the soil engineer was out there yesterday. They already bored 25 feet deep of soil. The report will, won't be out until a week later. 
but we are uh, the, the structural engineer has been hired already. So once the report is out, the structural engineer will work closely with the soil engineer to come up with the best uh, approach on the uh, the grading of the the entire basement in the most uh, most uh, safest way, either through some slot cutting uh, approach or some uh, reinforcement beforehand through some inspection from the city. So there is always safeguards to pursue, pursuing these med mitigation measures. So is the the existing house right now is is it a is it a framed first floor? Is it a slab on grade or the first How, floor is uh, it's actually a raised floor. Okay, so it's raised. All right. All right. Um, I guess I will now open up for public hearing. Am I am I okay? Yeah. Yeah. I think Thank we're you. all done. Thank you. Uh, staff, are there any public comments for this item? We do have um, four public comments in chambers, and um, I would like to call. Mr. Brian Lee to the podium. Make sure, sir, you speak clear, state your name and speak clearly for three minutes, either podiums on either side, whichever one you. Lillian. Okay, thank you. Yeah, my name is Brian Lee, living in 2035 West Lake Avenue. My neighbor and my family is very about the short-term and long-term effect of the 7,000 plus cubic feet hole. When they're doing a basement, they have to dig a hole in there. The 7,000 square feet, you know how big it is? If you change it to gallon of water is 25,000 gallons of water, okay? So they were about the, the damage on the old foundation. Our house is 73 years old. Just an old man working, anything touch is fragile. So please consider that. The tricky thing is, Crestley Avenue is two degree decline to the south, to the Alhambra Road. So every time when it's a heavy rain, it flooded the Alhambra Road. Every time heavy rain. So we live there, we know. So the decline created extra gravitational force and stress to the foundation. Any changes may cause problem. The worry is un understandable because the digging will disturb the equilibrium of the soil. Okay, just like the soil engineer, they measure the, all the data. Is on that moment. Okay, the pressure, everything. But when it's rain, when it's a long, long term, it changes. Anybody know? No, until it happened until the damage happened. So, so the worry is understandable because the digging will disturb the equilibrium of the soil. So everybody has to understand that. So for the member of the board, please consider to create a win-win-win situation by eliminating the basement sign. From the we eliminated the basement from the design. The first winner is the neighbor because they don't have to worry about the, the foundation. The second winner is the project. It saves money by not losing any livable floor for four space. Because if you look at the F AR basement is not calculated in the FAR table. The third, and but not the least winner is the earth. Not by not taking nor transporting the soil from one location to another, it saves a lot of carbon because moving soil 
7,000 square feet of soil. How many trucks you are talking about? It creates a lot of carbon emission. So please consider that. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next um, uh, public comment speaker card is Grace Chang. Make sure you state your name at the podium and you have three minutes, okay? Thank you. Hello? My name is Grace Chen, a resident at 1333 Empire Street. I'm great with uh, Mrs. Lee and uh, would like to share the same concern about this. I remodel and uh, add one room to my house 10 years ago. When I apply for city permit, the planner emphasized compa uh, compatibility with the surrounding house in our community. After I review the anterior change to 2031 Chris Lake Avenue, I, I do not feel like uh, additionals are uh, compatible. It, uh, I think it will definitely affect the appearance of our community. As a resident of the neighborhood, I do not support this design in its current state. Um, I think please need to revise the proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we have our next public comment speaker, Ray Santana. Sir, make sure you state your name when you come to the podium. I've been living in South Pasadena for 37 years. Uh, I'm fortunate in that uh, I was an, I'm an attorney now, but I'm a retired judge. I was appointed in 2008 by Arnold Schwarzenegger to the bench, and I retired two years ago. The reason I'm here is because this building that they're building has a lot of problems. The material problem it has is the basement. Why they're being, uh, building a basement uh, does not make any sense to me. I, I do not accept that they're using it for bikes. The other reason I'm here is what's happening to the neighborhood. This house is a McMansion, and everyone knows it's a McMansion. Uh, I, the design is not designed for a family. I'm afraid down the road, it's gonna be used for Airbnb. It might be used for other purposes like they do in Arcadia and in other cities. Sometimes they use it where people come, have kids, uh, so they could be here in this country. Uh, I'm just worried that it's, there's gonna be a lot of problems. And the basement itself, once it's started, it's going to take a long time and it's going to disrupt the traffic. Not only is it going to hurt the climate, there's going to be trucks every day. Uh, to do what they want to do to the basement is going to take months, in my opinion. And I've done some, I've handled contracting cases. Uh, the last seven years as a judge, I was a civil judge. The last few years, I was Stanley Moss handling complex civil cases and small claims cases of all types. So I, I just see this as a problematic. It changes the neighborhood. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of litigation, in my opinion, and I may end up being one of the litigants. But uh, unless you put some conditions, and I think the first condition, and the only way I would accept it, is you would have to eliminate the basement because uh, that, that our block, there's nobody that has a basement. I mean, that's the kind of thing you see on the East Coast. I was fortunate. I went to Yale University in Connecticut, and there are a lot of houses with basements, but not, not on Press Lake Avenue. So I just want to let, let you know that. And I have a family. My two daughters graduated from South Pass High School. My wife's a retired doctor, Kaiser doctor. Uh, she worked for 35 years. I was an attorney. I've been in, uh, Graduated from law school in 1977 from Berkeley and Stanford. I just think you have to foresee a lot of problems. And those are my statements. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our last comment, um, public comment card name is Carolyn Ha. Make sure you state your name in three minutes, okay? Hello, uh, my name is Carolyn Ha. I'm a resident of 2022 Cross Lake Avenue, Cross Street of this new uh, uh, this home. Um, I was uh, surprised the design is very different with, uh, than the rest of the home on our street. Um, I have three kids, like grew up from the street. Uh, I resident there uh, almost 20 years. And uh, my kids love the neighborhood. They love the home like a similar one floor. This is the first thing. It's uh, also I'm consider is very be, uh, going to be very inconvenient for the parking. It will be getting crowded. That's a, so like a mansion home. Number two is um, um, the basement too. Why they need a basement? Our street is no one has a basement. I really against that. Number three. Um, they cannot use, I, I saw the use reference of 2034, it's a second floor building, they cannot use it because the neighbor, uh, 2020, 2034 is a cross street of this house, is not a flat uh, lot. It's the, if you see the map, it's like that. It's not flat. So it's very different. It, that's why they designed second floor. The living room actually is on the second floor. Is there only one floor? The garage, they dig a garage for uh, actually it's a elevated with their lot. They grow the plants. It's very different. They cannot use this one. That's why I want to see. I really against that. Thank you. Thank you. And now the attendees participating on Zoom. Please click the hand icon to make a public comment on item number two. I, I think we have a couple more people that maybe didn't fill out cards um, to, to speak. Um, okay, ma'am, you have to... Um, I think if you guys fill out a card that way they know who's speaking and then and then you can yeah thank you okay the next um person we have is Lin Tong okay and this is item number two right okay go ahead state your name and it'll be there for three minutes hello my name is Lin Ki Tan I actually submit in written my comments to the committee. So I did not know. Um, yeah, I need to apply again. Yeah, it's a little bit getting nervous about this. I'm right next to the pro proposed project. Um, my house did not use as a compatible house. It's really a surprise to me. The house uh, has a Two floor is used, but my house is really typical house in this street. It's a one floor ranch house with square feet, 1,288. That's very typical in my, in my street. You simply just forgot my house. Secondly, um, I really get surprised about the basement and also balcony. You look at the entire street, I count all houses in my neighborhood. This street, next one, and the surrounding. None of the house has a balcony, has a basement. I'm really worried about my foundation. I guess everybody knows in my street, many houses has a you know, it's a really wood structure sitting on the concrete. It's not built in 1950. At that time, I think technology, I don't really know. I don't think it can stand your neighbor has digging how many 270 cubic yards with no, no effect on my house. 
So I really against this, unless you have some liability uh, to my house about foundation. I also wrote something else uh, that's including, you know, the north, they built the north facing windows. Please don't open the window on north side. That will really look straight into my property. They use comparison property that is uh, 2035. They did not open any window north facing. So why they open two windows there? And also, you know, the block uh, light, south facing uh, sunlight from my south facing window. So please take that into account. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And our last person is Helena Lee. Again, ma'am, state your name. My name is Helena Lee. I live on 2035 Press Lake Avenue. I submitted a full comment this yesterday. It should be posted on the website. I'm not sure whether you, you read the whole thing, but I want so the, the reason I wanted to, to come up here is my neighbor just mentioned about the 2034, the house right across the street of mine. You cannot use that house as a second story because the house was built by the one of the partner of the original track founder, Mr. Garrett. So the lot is completely different from our side, which is pretty much flat. The other side, 2034 is like on a hill, a little bit of hill. So their design was originally built. You should not use that as a comparison. My house 2035 was built, was added the second story, 1987, because at the time I need one more bedroom and I had no room to extend the back. The requirement at the time, I could only extend one foot to the back. So I had to add a second story. And I told my designer, to add that second story nicely, just look like the original house. I don't want to change anything to the outlook of the neighborhood and my house. And in fact, if you look at, if you go to my neighbors, there was no farmhouse looking. No one has a front porch that big. No one has a backyard, a patio that big, and no balcony at all. Of course, there's no basement. I do not think the, there should be a basement in the middle of the block. And I am sure when it rains heavily, the water seep down there will make some issue. If you look at Rolling Hill Estate, they, when they build the house, I am sure they had all the soil engineers approval, but now 12 houses are deemed to roll down the hills. Thank you. Thank you. Chair, if I may, I'll ask the question again to the Zoom guest if they wish to uh, yes. make a comment. Um, does anyone on Zoom have any um, uh, comments? Please raise your hands for a public comment on item two. And we do not have any raised hands. Okay, sorry, lost my place a little bit. Um, all right, uh, does the applicant want the opportunity for a three minute rebuttal? Are you, there's an opportunity for you to sort of speak to some of the points made. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. 
Okay, make sure you state your name and I'll put the timer for three minutes, okay? This is Denise, the owner. Hi, everyone. I apologize. I see that there's many unhappy and angry faces here. I will compromise and um, we're going to be neighbors. And I apologize that I didn't come out and speak to you in advance as I should have because um, we just have two infants at home um, very recently. So it's been extremely difficult to um, get out of the house. And um, I will try my best and whatever you've brought up, I'm sure those are really good concerns. And I wanna make sure that I'm very community person. Um, so I want to make sure everyone is happy and we can make this work. We're gonna hope that we can live there. We have a family of seven. And if we don't, we, we wouldn't wanna spend all that money and make it bigger. Yeah, so thank you. And um, that's it. But we, we've been through all this as families, uh, from members or from, from the relative side that space is always essential. And the, the livelihood of, of, of not just um, accommodating space, but for the kids to grow up in a neighborhood that they be proud of and, and to, to be in a school that they can create new friends and classmates. But at the same time, it's, this is the start of the, a new family for them. And to, 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 in a way, start off the wrong foot by designing something that is uproar to the neighborhood. It, it, it's not doing so well for the long term. So the owner is in a way open-hearted to um, accept the condition of approval to a certain extent to, to at least mitigate whatever necessary to make sure it's publicly safe, but at the same time be comfortable that they can accommodate seven people in the house. If you can understand from that perspective. So um, I think hopefully you can understand from this um, set of uh, dilemmas that, that they're, they're facing because um, they want to send the kids to South Pass the school district too as well. So they're under the pressure. So um, whatever you can decide today, they are really appreciative of this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, we will now close the public comments and have a discussion amongst the board. Uh, with someone like to begin the discussion? I'm happy to kick us off. Um, so first, I think first things first, I wanna kind of clarify the design aesthetic. It keeps being referred to as contemporary or modern farmhouse. And I would argue that it really is adjacent to that. There are some elements on it that make it appear that way. But honestly, just removing the window muntins would make it match the rest of the, it would be much more closely adapted to the other style of the neighborhood. So small minor tweaks would really, in my mind, make it blend better. The massing is almost identical. I mean, there's some, some, some variation to the neighbor's house. So to me, it really actually fits in from a massing standpoint. Um, it doesn't seem to be, I know the term McMansion was used. McMansion is where you're building out the, to the full envelope of the lot, and it doesn't appear that that's, that's been the case here. Um, you know, honestly, seeing the original design showing the history of where it was to where it is now, um, it's a major improvement. And I actually feel that they did a, they, they did a beautiful job. This is actually a really well-designed house. That's how I feel. Um, whether it fits in with the context of the neighborhood is a di different than that point that I'm making. So it's very well designed. Fitting in with the neighbors, it could be just a matter of tweaking some minor things. Um, I'd also say that in terms of the basement issue, I have a basement in my house. I live in South Pasadena. It isn't quite as big as this, but it is a basement. So I know that they exist. And this was not a question I had asked for staff but I'm curious if it is true that all the houses on that street don't have basements. Cause I kept hearing that 
being repeated. And it's just, I'm curious if there's any way to check records to see if there has been other excavations that have occurred in the past there. Um, also, I am a believer in professional credentials. So when you do have soil engineers um, and civil engineers and structural engineers who are designing, testing, surveying the site, I believe that they are taking safety into account. So it sounds like all of those standard protocols and requirements are being met here. So while that is not the design review board's purview, I did want to comment on that because it is part of the overall design. And so I, I trust that process. I trust that should there be concerns for neighboring properties, foundation issues, that that will be identified through these surveys, through these reports, and it will be flagged. And obviously the design would have to be adjusted and accommodate that. Um, like I said, overall, I think the design is really well done. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any comment they'd like to add. Well, given the um, original design, I could see why some of you would be a little upset. It was really large and overbearing on the property and in the neighborhood. But I believe that this is a very beautiful design and it would fit nicely in with the neighborhood. Everyone's free to upgrade their property. It's it's very nicely done. It's I agree with Sam, not modern farmhouse necessarily, but I think you'll all be content when you see it. It's not large. And what they did with the upstairs, uh, making the upstairs smaller will impede less on the sunlight for your south side window. Um, I think that they they probably had you in mind for that. Um, seems like they made a lot of good compromises, but they could also maybe make note of, of uh, I think it was Mr. Lee, what Mr. Lee said about flooding in the neighborhood and having a basement and putting precious things down there. I would maybe consider that or reconsider that. It's um, it's a very nicely designed home, and uh, it it will accommodate their family. I think that you'll probably all get along well as neighbors in the end. I so, have nothing else to add. I agree with everything Sam said. So I was just gonna kind of tack onto what you're saying. Um, I think from the street side that it it is, you know, the the first story is pretty much the envelope of what was there, the existing house. And the second story does kind of step it back and pull back. From looking at these elevations, it looks like on the north side of the house, they've kept the windows on the second story very small. And the, the windows on the second story look to the backyard rather than at the house on the north side. So it, it does look like there's been an, an attempt to sort of not look into the neighbors um you know sometimes you know you're looking into other people's windows i i do feel like this the backyard elevation and the back the back patio and the second story porch is a little big for the it, it seems much larger from the the rear of the house especially for the size of the backyard that that back the back porch seems it seems big to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and I would, I, you know, I would just, the other part of that with the second story is I see a number of sconces and lights on the second story. And lots of times those can end up being a little bit of a glare. They can create glare and, and other things, uh, for neighbors and, and to sort of be conscious of those because lots of times lights have a, a covering on them that you, when it's on a first floor, your eye line doesn't necessarily see the light source, but when they're up higher, you're seeing into the light source so that those can be be something to sort of, you might want to look at some light fixtures that, um, uh, you know, they have different kinds of sconces that just throw light on the wall and it's it's more, sorry, it's a little bit more subtle and subdued and it, it creates the light you need for safety when moving around at night, but not necessarily, uh, you know, like, you know, when we, when we see the neighbor's house that has the, you know, the bright floodlight on their garage and it's like, you know, every time you see it. Uh, so I, I would make some suggestions about maybe taking a look at the back patio and some of those light fixtures at the second floor. Um, but I think the size of the house, it's, you know, it's very similar scale to the house next door. And I, I know that 
you all spoke about that. Um, and, and I think I agree with your point about some of the detailing of the, the window, sort of the pattern, some of those things, if you just sort of kind of dial it back a little bit, it'll, it'll move from that kind of, you know, the, the aesthetic to sort of being more ranch style because ranch style is a little bit kind of in between, like as far yeah. as the style goes, it's not really, you know, as far as characteristics and, and sort of you pull back on some of those, those elements. And I think it'll sort of blend more in with the ranch style. Uh, but I just wanted to touch on the basement too. Yeah. Um, because when you engage structural engineers and civil engineers, and, and as as you said, that's not really the purview of the design review board because we're just looking at the design of the property and, and the basement really doesn't impact the design because it's underground and we don't see it. So it's not something we'd normally comment on. But I will say that as part of the plan review process, you know, if they're engaging structural engineers, these are engineers that are professionals, they're stamping drawings, that they're, you know, they're putting their professional work on the line to sort of verify and engineer the basement, the walls, the waterproofing, all that stuff to make sure that it, there aren't any issues. Now, I'll say that's outside of our purview, but it is part of the process of the city plan check to sort of make sure all that is being sort of accounted for. Um, um, so, Sure. I would. Can I make a couple more comments? Yeah, sure. Um, so similar, going off what you had mentioned about the lights, I think that's a really great point. You know, changing the light fixtures. I think even the style of the light fixtures adds to, gives it more of that farm feel. So if there's a concern there, maybe looking at other light fixtures, um, the muntins on the windows and the patterning, as we mentioned, changing that can give it bring it more into a ranch style look. Also the shiplap. Although I did notice that the neighbor to the to the east, um, they do have the shiplap style on their house and maybe some of the other ones do too. Um, I did look on Google Earth to understand the conditions and the, the, the second story. I, I saw that the one across the street is, is questionable because of the way it fits it or integrates into the topography. However, further down the street, there's two other properties that have um, double stories too, which we haven't heard from. I don't believe that we've heard from those property owners. So it's not like it's the only house on the street with a, you know, a second story or that and its neighbor. There's a few. So it's not the massing, I don't believe is out of context. I do. It's a really good point, um, Brian, that you brought up about the back porch. Looking at it now, I agree that it is a bit large that maybe, maybe um, just shrinking it a little bit. Um, that could, that could help quite a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, overall though, I do think that it's a uh, that it's uh, it's designed well, and I think with some minor tweaks that it could, it it will be a great, I think, um, addition to the neighborhood and a, an improvement. Honestly, come seeing what the existing house is, seeing pictures of the existing house and what they're doing, I I do believe that it's an improvement. I so, do. Too. I yeah. agree. And it's to me also, it doesn't seem like a super large house, especially for to accommodate a family of seven. Seven's a lot of people, so and it fits within the requirements of the of of the 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 zoning code. So, um, are 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 we allowed to hear additional comments? No, I got. I guess not. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so, let's see. So, I guess the question is. Do I have a motion to, because uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a little adjustment to this uh, personally. Well, do, uh, would it make sense to do either a subcommittee or a chair review? In that case, I don't know if a subcommittee is necessary because those are, I, I kind of see a subcommittee as when we're doing more, like changing the massing yeah. or doing some major changes. But I would say in this case, maybe a chair review might be adequate to make some minor design tweaks to kind of fit in more with the aesthetic of the other? Yeah, we could do that. Yeah. Okay, great. So mm, you want to make a motion? I'll make the motion, but I'm trying to think about the wording. Um, I will make a motion to technically, is this an approval if it's a 
Chair review. Okay. So I will make an, a move it, um, a motion to approve the project with um, some minor changes looking at the windows, the light fixtures, and the back porch. Um, and this will be done through a design review board chair review. Um, that's the motion. Yep. All right. Do I have a second? I will second the motion. Um, so uh, I guess will staff please take roll call? Board, um, board member Younger? Yes. Board member Hill? Yes. And Chair Nichols? Uh, yes. Motion carries. Okay, so that moves us to item, um, the next item, 830 Roland Street. Uh, staff, do we have a presentation for this project? Yes, we do. Thank you, Chair Nichols and members of the board. Um, the project planner, Mackenzie, can be here today, so I'll be presenting the project. Uh, my name is Matt Chen, planning manager here at the Community Development Department. Um, the item before you tonight is uh, 830 Rolling Street, and the project number is 2564-DRX. Next slide, please. Um, the island before you is located at 830 Rolling Street. As you can tell by the aerial image, um, the subject property is located to the right side or to, to the east of Rolling Street. And currently, um, the house is a two story house. Um, as you can tell by this um, street view image. And the subject property is zone RS, which stands for residential single family. And the lot size is approximately 9,150 square feet. And staff like to provide a little background um, regarding this project. And the house is currently approximately uh, 2,543 square feet with a garage of 477. And staff provide some background in the staff report regarding the previous permit uh, associated with this project, including the house was built in 1983. Um, what the applicant is proposing to do for this particular project is to add a 95 square feet on the first floor. As for the second floor, um, the applicant is proposing to enclose the, um, the balcony, which is approximately 133 square feet. In addition, the, uh, the, the project is including the exterior modification, including changing the architectural style, uh, create a dormers, and also a siding. And, the project also includes some interior remodel to the house as well. And this image in front of you just showing approximately um, a site plan showing where the proposed addition is. And the addition is mostly to the front of the house, which is the uh, first and second floor addition, which will be visible from the street perspective. And as for the fourth, First floor floor plan on the right hand side is the existing first floor floor plan, and on the left is the proposed. The first floor addition will be approximately very close to the Rolling Street to to the to the left side of the house, which in this image is more to the to the north. Um, next slide. And as far as uh, the second floor, the applicant wants to enclose the existing second floor balcony, which is uh, highlighted in yellow on this, uh, on this image. And the second floor enclosure, which is approximately 133 square feet. And then for the next couple of slides, staff will provide like uh, kind of before and after elevation view for, for the board to consider. And this is the uh, front elevation view, which is you can see it visible from Rolling Street. On the left hand side is the existing um, elevation view, and on the, on the right hand side is the proposed. 
and the project includes the uh, um, the two dormers on the second floor, also on the bottom on the first floor, be uh, uh, one dormer as well. In addition, the applicants want to uh, changing the roofing material, also add a, a siding to the house, and also the um, uh, changing the garage door. And this image is the west elevation, which is um, kind of facing the street perspective as well. So they're changing the uh, kind of exterior material of the house facing the street from the stucco to a more siding material. Next slide is the east elevations. And from this perspective, uh, you can probably uh, see the dormer on the right side, which is more facing the front of the house. And next image is the south, which is the rear elevations. And most of the changes to this elevation will be changing the roof material, the exterior um, sidings, and also some door and window and door change out to the existing house. And for this image, uh, the applicants kind of changing the, the uh, roof plan more mostly affecting to the front elevation of the house. And at the end, <clears throat> staff is recommending the design review board to approve this project um, based on the finding in the staff report and also subject to, to the attached conditions of approval. And staff would like to mention that um, uh, additional document was provided to the design review board earlier this afternoon, kind of modify some of the fire department conditions. So staff will be requesting the design review board to um, kind of based on the findings in the staff report, but also subject to conditions, including the additional document uh, in the um, staff provided earlier this, this afternoon. And this concludes staff's presentation. Staff is ready for any question. Uh, does anyone have any questions for staff? I do not. I do not either. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any questions either. Um, just for the design review board members' information, the project architect is here to answer any questions you might have. Great. Thank you. Uh, so, does anyone have any questions for the applicant? Does the applicant? Oh, no presentation. Yeah. Oh, did I skip that? Oh, does the applicant have a presentation? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes. Yes. Start that Thank timer. You. I'm Steve Dahl, architect for the homeowners. Uh, Tiffany and Darren are both here. Uh, their kids are not. And it's really exciting when the room clears, when we sit down, no basement with this, and we're <laughs> infilling a balcony. So we're, we're, I think we're going in a good, and no uh, exterior second floor lights either. So we're learning. Um, this is really special. You see, it's, it's a very modest um, uh, remodel and addition. Uh, not many square feet, but it's going to make a big impact. Um, this is Darren's family home. So he grew up there. His parents are still in the home. Uh, they're making a deal. They're not going to just kick them out on the street. But um, the, the home is tired. It's been there since 1983. Do we, even staff, I, uh, Mackenzie, bless her heart, she's off this week. She's wonderful to work with. I think she called it a, a tract home, and that's what I'd call it too. So to, to give it a little bit of a craftsman twist, I think would really be nice to blend in here in South Pasadena. Um, so we're, we're in full agreement with the staff report. Uh, thank you to Matt and Mackenzie. As Matt did allude to, you did get that new memo from the fire department and, and thank them for really particularly their um, fire department FD9. It's a really comprehensive condition that kind of outlines if fire sprinklers are to be required, uh, what you need to do. Uh, Matt and I have been corresponding earlier today in between him putting out a hundred other fires to protect our city from, from uh, rogue city planning. Um, there, there are just, unfortunately, uh, we're in agreement on all the design issues, but um, the conditions of approval, and, and sometimes uh, we know this happens and these guys are so busy, uh, standard typical conditions are thrown in there um, to, to make sure everything is covered. But in this case, some of them are not applicable. So the first one we'll talk about is on page two of seven of the attached conditions. And this is condition number B7. B is in a building in this case. 
and, and this states that a drainage plan uh, needs to be done, grading and drainage. Um, and this is similar to page four of seven, uh, PW15, which stands for Public Works Condition 15. And this is even scarier than what the building department said about grading and drainage. This goes on to say that not only do we need to do a grading and drainage plan, and, and as an architect, I've done those many a time with, with minor kind of things, but this is we need a, a licensed civil engineer to do this whole grading and drainage plan. If you look through the architectural drawings, and, and Matt could get up here if, if I'm stretching the truth too much and, and get you back in line, there's no uh, grading or drainage, no yard change, no site plan changes at all. So there's no need for any grading or drainage. So uh, Matt and I have talked before, and it seems to make sense that in these conditions, and then we'll talk about fire conditions after that, that if we just, because neither of us are experts nor you, that if we put if applicable, we'll leave all this language in there because it's important language. But if we can just add a preface on these grading and drainage um, issues that if applicable, and as you pointed out, uh, Sam, in the earlier um, uh, hearing before us, uh, all these projects go through the plan check process. So we wanna make sure it's done properly, but we don't believe right now it is applicable. And then let's follow uh, into the fire department conditions. So this is on page five of seven of the conditions of approval. Condition F1 is fine, F for fire, uh, but we have, again, what will take um, uh, concerns with uh, F2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Um, all these, the, the scariest one starts out and says F2, fire sprinklers are required, submit plans for city for approval. And, and that's just incorrect here. There, there's no threshold that's being crossed, uh, nothing. The, the typical South Pasadena City uh, Fire Department ordinance says that if you add 750 square feet or more, you gotta do sprinkle the whole home. Or uh, also, and, and that's very uh, nicely outlined in their proposed new FD condition number nine, if you change more than 50% of the value of the home, and that seems fair to you, you're, you're messing up the whole home, you're starting over from scratch, uh, everything should be fire sprinkled, but that is not the case in this home. So, and again, Matt can come up and make sure we do this properly because you can't trust these applicants. Um, if we could put again on these uh, fire um, conditions, F2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, if applicable, um, and then that would be fine. We're in agreement on everything else. Are there any questions I can answer for you while I'm here? Um, I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions. Um, can I get a pen and then can you repeat those specific items so we can make sure we mention in our motion? Thank you. So what were the numbers? B, B7, it's like playing bingo. <laughs> B7. B7. That stands for building. Okay. Uh, that's grading and drainage. Uh, similar thing with PW, PW. for public work, yeah. 15. Yep. And then F for fire, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And then we like the new FD9 that was uh, given to you earlier today that comprehensively kind of says, if applicable, all the things we need to do. Okay. And so for those items, you just would like to add if applicable in front of them. You don't want any of those items crossed out. Matt can come up and, and, and see if that's kosher. Okay. I just try to But we thought just adding if applicable, then, then we haven't made any mistakes. We haven't tromped on, on the, the fire department's expertise and they can determine later whether it's applicable. Seems fair. Uh, yes. So uh, staff have discussed this, um, those conditions with the applicant. And staffs agree with uh, some of the commission. Of course, some they look like boilerplate conditions, but also we want to make sure they're still in place, just in case the projects go beyond what is what, what board approved today. So I think um, that was a good suggestion by by the project architect that do if applicable still could be applied depends on the actual final scope of the project. Okay, that sound that makes sense. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. That was my only question. No other okay. questions. Great. Um, I will now open up this uh, for public hearing. Staff, are there any public comments for this item? 
we do not have any uh, or received any requests for public comments in chambers. Attendees participating on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make a public comment on item three. And we do not have any public comments via Zoom. All right, thank you. Um, we will now pl close the public comments and have discussion amongst the board. Uh, would someone like to begin the discussion? Okay, I will. I, I think it's a pretty straightforward design. It looks it looks great. It is an improvement. I appreciate the dormers. Sorry, I'm jumping back to the plans here. Um, I appreciate the articulation of the roof. Um, it looks, in my mind, it looks like it fits in with the context of the neighborhood. Um, I do think it's an improvement. Some of the detailing. So I, you know, I I I think it's a it's a good good project. Beautiful upgrade to the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree as well. It like it's kind of night and day from the house. You know, it's definitely 1983 or whatever. <laughs> so I, I I fully think it's an improvement to the the neighborhood. Yeah, I agree. The the craftsman style details that were added, I think, will be really lovely. And I think that the um the project as a whole is uh it's getting a, a great facelift. So Update, upgrade. Update, update, and upgrade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, can I get a motion to approve? I will make the motion since I wrote down all the numbers. So we will make the motion to approve the project with changes to the conditions of approval by adding the language, if applicable, to items number B7, PW15, F2, F3, F4, F5, F6, F7, and F8. Um, and so that is the motion. And I will second that motion. Great. Um, will staff please take roll call? Board member Younger? Yes. Board member Hill? Yes. Chair Nichols? Yes. Motion carries. Great. All right. So we now move on to comments uh, from our city council liaison. I, no comments. Just thank you all for your very thoughtful analysis. It's really great to hear what the, all the things you're looking at, and thank you for your time. Great. Thank you. Uh, now we move on to comments from our design, design review board members. Are there any comments from the board? I do have one comment to make, and I don't really know if this is how to address it. Um, I'm noticing now more that we were getting a lot more public comments relating to the construction process, relating to items that are outside the design review board's purview. And that's, I'm totally comfortable with that. That's not, I just wonder if there's a way to educate the public or let them know that the intent of the design review board and what that means. And if they have other ants, if they have other questions regarding construction process or regarding these items that they can address them yeah or where they can go where they can go i always feel bad that we can't like it's not in our purview to sort of address some of those items i was um, thinking about that yeah. too i'm glad you brought that up we've had it uh, come up a couple yeah. times now and i i just don't know how what's the best avenue i don't really have a solution just if there's a way we can kind of discuss it or i, I don't i don't know i don't know what the process is so this way community members who do have concerns have a resource to go to to address those concerns and they're not coming to this pu specific public forum to to address it not again not that i'm opposed to that it's just more of of kind of giving them an avenue or a process to address those concerns that's it that's my comment. <laughs> i have no other comments or questions All thank right. you uh, okay we now move on from Comments to uh, to comments from our subcommittees. We don't have any subcommittees, I don't think. No. Uh, um, so we can skip that. And so I guess, uh, thank you board members. We're now moving on to comments from the staff. Thank you, Chair and members of the board. Uh, thank you, board member Hill. I think I, I definitely, if, I think for the uh, past couple of meetings, I think were a couple of cases. So. I think one's being uh, South Pass is kind of an older community with a narrow street. And I would definitely see a lot of construction, new house, room addition, ADU, and try to kind of accommodate well the homeowner one, but also try to respect the neighborhoods. I think one of the suggestions, I think 
in my head, I'm thinking that right now, maybe in the staff report or staffing, going to a little bit deeper, kind of talking about there will be conditions of approval, talk about public works related. I think, as you see, some a lot of the conditions are oil play, for example, if they close down the street, they need to notify the neighborhood. They want to do construction, they have to provide construction plan to the public works department during the plan check process. Maybe one of the kind of boil play staff report or template will be emphasized in the staff report. So when the, um, the community members read the staff report, there's a, you know, I guess staff already look into it. Maybe that we can preemptively kind of try to do that ahead of the time. But also I know it's challenging for, for, for public hearing purposes. That's why the, the members, they can voice their concerns, um, talk about the, the issues they have. I think that's what I have so far, but staff are definitely looking to other ideas to, to, to educate the public just to, to get ahead of the, the time. I, I definitely, like, like board member Hill saying, I started noticing a trend, <laughs> talk about construction impact hours and other items. Um, on to uh, 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 update from staff. Staff only have one update at um, this point. So right now, I think many of you know we're going to uh, update our general plan and downtown specific plan. So for the next, for this month, we'll have uh, two planning commission meetings. Uh, for example, we'll have one next Tuesday on the 8th and also another one on August 21st, which is Monday. Both items will be exclusively for general plan update, downtown specific plan update, and all the rezoning effort that we need to do to kind of implement our housing element programs. So kind of mark your calendar for uh, August 8th or August 21st if you want to uh, participate in meetings and also kind of uh, let us know your thoughts on what we need to do. And also we're planning to take the, um, the general plan and downtown space plan to the city council meeting sometime in, in September because by, I'm not an attorney to the core settlement or core <laughs> settlement agreement or a quarter, we have to do our rezoning by September 27th, if I remember <laughs> correctly. So we have very short timeline to do a lot of rezoning efforts and also change a lot of the codes to accommodate additional housing, not just AD, but multiple um, multifamily housing units. So welcome um, the design review board members or any community members that you know, come out to, to participate. Uh, we want to hear from you at the planning commission meetings or at the council meetings. And that's all I have um, for, for update. Thank you all for, for uh, review our projects also give us great input. Thank you so much. Can I actually add another comment? I know I'm breaking the protocol. I also just want to thank city staff. You guys are, I feel that you're doing a great job. I know that you guys are under pressure. There's all these time limits. Um, so I really want to commend you guys and everything that you've been doing lately. So, so thank you. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Triple that. All right, I guess that brings us to the end. So let's adjourn uh, for the, adjourn this design review meeting uh, on Thursday until uh, the next meeting on Thursday, September 7th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Great.